Last week, you sued Pinterest, saying you were fired for speaking up about discrimination. I know you don't seek the spotlight because I tried to interview you many times when you were an executive at Square to no avail. Why speak out now? I was hired at Pinterest uh, as the first COO, uh, and I was looking forward to being a, a force of progress and drive change. The companies that cater to women, 70% um, of the users are actually women, and the ad product was in its infancy. Um, but I realized fairly quickly that while I was given a seat at the table, I had no power or I was not empowered to use my talent to drive uh, Pinterest forward. And I, I do think if it's happened for someone at my level in tech, it happened to many women across the organization. And I wanted to be able to add a voice to this conversation uh, and explain a little bit uh, my story. And I'm hoping sharing my story uh, start a conversation about what the role of women and even when they reach the sea level of a company, there is still gender discrimination. Now, I know you can't speak about specific legal issues, but in a Medium post, you don't hold back. You describe a culture that is demoralizing, secretive, toxic. I'd love to hear in your voice, how did you experience that culture? Tell us what happened to you. And I describe it in the Medium post. You know, I was not invited to meeting. I was not involved in management decision, you know, for example, I was not even on the IPO roadshow and I had experience previously at Pinterest being on the IPO roadshow. I felt I was marginalized as a company by men that really didn't value my perspective. And, uh, and when I tried to raise my voice, instead of, of being applauded for strong leadership, I was criticized for it. Uh, I made it to the table, but I was still expected to conform to gender stereotype and, and really behave differently than from my male colleague. Um, and, and that's really what the story is all about. Your description of CEO Ben Silverman's leadership is damning. Uh, only men were invited to the meetings where decisions were made, men who were in the in-group, there was constant backstabbing, gossiping, even though you were the COO, and number two, you say the only way you could get things done was by hiding things and saying what you really thought was dangerous. What was it about Ben's leadership that you feel was particularly problematic? Uh, I do think is um, to rely on the same group of people and do not hearing different voice at the table or when these different voices are actually coming forward, not listening to them. I think it's really important that, that people understand that hiring women is actually not enough. Making the place where they can be candid and share their perspective is even more important than just hiring them. And I wanted to make this point because even in 2020, it's still happening. Um, so that was really what I experienced at Pinterest, and I, I can only talk about my experience at Pinterest. Uh, a Pinterest spokesperson told us in a statement, we remain committed to advancing our culture to ensure that Pinterest is a place where all of our employees feel included and supported, which is why there's an ongoing independent review regarding our culture, policies, and practices. We're reviewing the complaint filed. Our employees are incredibly important to us, and we take all concerns brought to our attention seriously. Some of the other things you allege is that, you know, your, your vesting schedule was less favorable than your colleagues. You were paid less than men. And yet you drove the company's revenue from $500 million to over a billion dollars. Ben fired you, you say, in a 10-minute video call saying that you were not collaborative. What was going through your head and your heart at that time? It was a shock. Uh, and it was, um, clearly I didn't see it coming, <laughs> obviously. And if you remember the timing, it was in April when we were all trying to figure out how to really communicate and interact with all our workforce. And so now this is completely distributed because we are on months into COVID uh, situation. So yeah, yes, it was a shock. Um, uh, and as, as I said before, you know, I appreciate the statements of wanting to support women uh, or any 
actually employees that will come forward, but really the company culture spring from what it does, not what it says. Uh, and again, too often people are focusing on hiring the women, um, but they should look at retention, promotion, and really take a hard look at the culture of them. Now, to be fair, this is a legal case. We don't know their side of the story yet. And you have worked at many companies. You've had hundreds, thousands of people reporting to you. And I'm sure there were situations where you had to fire someone who was successful somewhere else, but maybe you didn't feel was successful with you or, or simply wasn't working out. What's different, do you think, in this case? Uh, I think it was very different for anything I experienced uh, before uh, in the previous company I work with. Uh, I think what I, what I felt is I felt my gender was getting in the way uh, about uh, was getting in the way of my performance at Pinterest, uh, and that's what was very different from any other places I ever work with. Now you rarely hear from women in the C-suite about discrimination they face either because they have the most to lose or carry this extra burden of feeling they have to protect the company. Why don't we hear from more women in the C-suite? How often do you think this is happening to other women at your level? So again, I, I can only talk about what I experience at Pinterest, but, but discrimination at the C-suite level is different. Like it's not like, hey, grab me coffee. Like I didn't have this type of conversation. It's much more insidious at the executive level and the way women are pushed up by men is different. You know, I, I talk about the glass ceiling uh, and so that I said, oh, I've broken it. I have achieved a good model. Um, but, but as a senior level, it's happening beyond your back and it's undermining you at every step of the way you try to lead. And it's hard to recognize, especially there is a, this false sense of women at this level are not vulnerable because of their power. But, but my story is clear an example that this is not true. Now, this is the same week that the Democratic Party is trying to position itself as the best place for women working or otherwise. We're coming into a critical election and your story is now more important than ever. How much of an influence did the political environment and President Trump being in the White House have on your decision to come forward? I just, of course, I have my personal conviction. Uh, and of course, I want more women in power, whether it's in political system or in companies. So as is, I, I will completely support seeing more women in position of power. And actually, that are able to make decisions and take action. And I encourage this across the board. But uh, this has nothing to do about uh, Mr. Trump. The irony is that 70% of Pinterest users are women. Do you think if Pinterest had more women at the table, more women in decision-making roles, that the product would be better, that they would be making more money? Uh, I think the product could be better. It could be more inclusive. I know Pinterest is working on it. Um, I, um, you know, every company, it's not just Pinterest, every company, there is a ton of study and research that you can find uh, when you have a much more uh, inclusive and diverse workforce. And then when you are able to hear all these different voices, actually the outcome is always better. You worked at Google for many years and you were also on Jack Dorsey's executive team at Square. And, and Jack had a lot of women reporting to him at that time. Was Jack di a different leader than Ben? And how so? You know, I'm very glad you recognize this uh, because not a lot of people notice this, but Jack Dorsey is an incredibly proponent of women in the C-suite. And I, my gender was never in question. In fact, I actually think one of his superpower is his ability to actually abstract the idea from the messenger. And that is very powerful. Ben, since much of this has played out, he's made several statements about how his eyes have recently been opened to racial and gender discrimination at the company, and yet employees have told Bloomberg that they went to HR repeatedly, their concerns were not heard, there was retaliation or career consequences for speaking out. Is it really possible that he didn't know? You will have to ask him. Uh, again, I can't, I can't speak for him. But sure, and I got fired.
Ellen Powell, um, who famously sued Kleiner Perkins for gender discrimination, didn't settle her case. They went all the way to trial. And we heard Kleiner's side of the story, and I know it was very public, and she's told me it was very painful for her. And Kleiner ultimately won that case. Are you open to settling, or, or do you want to and plan to take this all the way, knowing how hard it will be? So I know how hard it would be, and I know how hard it was uh, for Ellen Powell to come forward. Um, you know, there is two parties in this decision. I'm very confident in the case I have right now. Now, I spent over two years speaking to women, writing a book called Brotopia about the experience of women in Silicon Valley. And at that time, it was a Pinterest employee, Francoise Tracy Cho, who had yeah. really put the pressure on the industry to release their numbers. And, it, and even though she was doing that personally, it sort of put a halo around Pinterest. Now you have employees staging a virtual walkout protesting systemic discrimination. You say that discrimination there is rampant. Who else is this affecting? I think it's affecting the people at Pinterest first. They are very hardworking employees. They came to Pinterest like I did uh, because they were inspired by the mission of Pinterest. They are inspired by the audience of Pinterest and they want to see change. And I think that's very important. Now, there are two black women, Ifioma Ozama and Erica Shimizu Banks, who recently went public about negative experiences and claims of racial discrimination, including unfair pay, retaliation. How big a problem do you think racial discrimination is in particular at the company? Uh, you know, first I want to recognize both Ifioma and Erica. There was the first one that came forward. Um, they gave me the courage also to tell my story. Um, uh, and uh, I have no reason not to think that what they mentioned, I did have a different experience, we are at different level, and I'm actually not um, uh, African-American, but what they experienced was not, from what I can read, uh, was racial discrimination, um, and I totally support them. You, you say in your Medium post that at times, you felt yourself, you were complicit, that you didn't speak up enough for others who were having problems and you actually apologized for that. And I found that really intriguing. How do you think you could have done better? And, and is there a lesson in that for, for other women who yeah. might be feeling the same thing in a position of power or, or somewhat a, a position of power at their own companies? I, I know, and I think that's what is interesting is when you are in this position of power, you think, okay, I made it, you should be able to make it. And, and sometimes you say, okay, let me try to help you or find a new way, but it was not enough. Um, I realize this now. Um, Pinterest did just announce their first black board member, a black woman named Andrea Wizom, president of the real estate company Skywalker Holdings. Do you think that'll change things? Uh, I'm glad they have wanted actually women. Uh, <laughs> to the board, I think it, it, it's good. Uh, my question for Pinterest is, if it, is she going to be empowered to implement some of the high ideas she has? Uh, and I want to see action. Speaking of action, you've got a lot of recommendations about what companies and people can do differently. If you could say one thing to CEOs and boards about what they can and should be doing to make sure this isn't happening in their workplace, what would it be? Just not hire like cultivate this woman, hear them, retain, promote. I never seen a case of, of a woman that is over promoted. So what's next for you, Francoise? Will we see you in the C-suite again? Uh, right now I'm very focused on, on this issue. I really want to add my voice uh, to many women and underrepresented people that they get a seat at the table and they feel empowered. Uh, to actually make decisions and change things. So that's my focus. Where it leads me, I, I don't know yet. I would see. Uh -huh.